In looking at the journal purpose, there are several items that you can see here. We um, utilize the journal to uh, develop the student ability to critically evaluate themselves in relation to their professional practice behavior. So you'll notice, at least in my sections, when I am reading journals, I'm encouraging the students to have some depth in self-reflection and introspection. It's also a tool to help students relate theory to practice. So there's a section in their journal that specifically asks the students to reference courses and specific learning in their courses that they have utilized in the practice setting. So uh, I also encourage the students very specifically um, to go back and revisit uh, past assignments, past notes, books, etc. Um, to refresh their memories about specific learning. It's also a tool for us to evaluate the students' experiences and progress towards their goals. So we want to make sure that they are indeed improving and that they are reaching their objectives and goals that are set on their learning plan. We also monitor their number of hours and uh, look at their communication in written form. So field instructors feel free to evaluate their writing and correct their writing as this is one of the last opportunities to do so before graduation. Let's talk a little bit about journals. Journals are different this semester, um, starting in spring of 2018. Um, I ask that students do in every circumstance possible to uh, complete journals during agency practicum time. I know there are some extenuating circumstances, agencies that don't have computer access, or students that are completing their practicum where they work and are limited in time. Everyone else, though, really should be completing their journals at the agency during agency practicum time. Um, it helps the students to learn how to manage documentation and their time and priorities and flexibility, etc. And so I really want them to work that into their time. Students often ask how long it takes to complete a journal. I give them a very um, average kind of uh, hour criteria, but of course there are some that are quicker and some that are faster. Um, but it's around six to eight hours um, per journal. Journals are due about every three weeks for students that are finishing in May or that are finishing in one semester. Um, if they are extending their practicum out, um, then it's every four, maybe uh, every four to five weeks that journals are due. Um, and so that should give them time and they should be doing their journal in small amounts, small increments um, throughout those three to five week time periods. And Instead of saving up and saying I need this full eight hour block to do their journal and then they're missing out on some excellent key experiences and we don't want that to happen. Um, so they should be fitting in their journal assignments amongst other um, priorities within their practicum. Um, journal time should definitely be a part of their recorded hours um, as it is uh, an assignment that goes along with their practicum. Um, so this semester we have a little bit different. Um, we always have five journals that are due during the semester. However, we're going to change it up just a little bit um, due to some student feedback and um, some reworking within the field committee. And so we are going to have three traditional uh, journals that we always have the same format, although we have um, uh, move some things around within the journals, but still they have the same topics and the same information. It's just in a different order now. So those three journals will be those typical longer journals that you're used to seeing. And then though we're going to have in between those longer journals, we're going to have two um, short journals that uh, 
You can look in your packets and see the journal assignments. You'll see um, an example of an advanced clinical or PPNA journal and you'll see a brief journal assignment. So that's the, the shorter one and um, that asks the students to connect and experience with an actual assignment from their class. And then something new that we've added at the end of that um, journal is that we've asked them to discuss what's been occurring in supervision meetings. Um, and so you can again find an example of that in your packets or um, from what's been sent to you via email. Um, hopefully that will work for everyone. I'm interested to hear some feedback from you. Um, so if you have any feedback, just give me an email and let me know. Um, the faculty liaison is going to set the due dates um, for those journals. Make sure that when you're discussing expectations at the beginning of the semester that the student informs you of those due dates so that you can get those on your calendar and be ready for them um, and know uh, if they interfere with your um, time out of town or vacation, etc. so the student can get them in a little bit early. The student is going to um, put, the stu put the journal into task stream and first ask for feedback or comments from you as the field instructor. You will be alerted by email that you um, have a request for comments. You can look at the journal then and uh, go through it and provide comments. It's very important to provide comments to the students. That is what they really enjoy and it helps them to know if they're on track or not on track. So really important to give that constructive criticism. Um, it's, it's not helpful for students to hear, you did a great job on this journal. Um, it's pretty brief and very nonspecific, and they really, really want very specific feedback on these journals as much as you can. Um, so once they request comments from you, you're going to provide those comments, which will alert the student. And then without changing the journal, the student will not change anything. The student will submit the journal, and then the um, faculty liaison will be able to see it and provide the final grade. Um, make sure that the student um, is asked to give you plenty of lead time. So if the journal is due, say, on the 10th, they can give it to you by like the 4th so that you have time to review it, provide comments, and still have the students submit it by the due date of the 10th. Um, so make sure that you're asking them to give it to you with that plenty of lead time. And again, the students do not go back and change that journal after you give comments. They just submit it to the faculty liaison. Um, and uh, journals are an assignment just like they would be in any other class and is therefore um, subject to any plagiarism, including self-plagiarism, meaning they shouldn't copy their own work from other classes or from um, previous journals into, um, into other assignments or other journals. Okay, we'll just go into journal content a little bit more. Um, since it's a little bit different uh, than it has been in the past. So for the traditional journal, the longer three journals, so their first, their third, and their fifth journal will be uh, the traditional journal. They will identify one key experience. Please have them choose one key experience. For example, um, they should choose one group process that they're having instead of one group over the entire semester. Um, they are able to have more depth um, and uh, write about more specific information if they target their key experience um, into one key experience instead of multiple key experiences. Um, they're going to talk about what happened, uh, what was going on in this key experience, who was there, and what they did or what you as the field instructor um, did during that key experience. They're also going to look at influencing factors um, that contributed to this key experience and that's broken down into a few sections depending on what type of student it is um, completing the journal. 
They're also looking at um, reflection and learning. We want to see that the students have some ability of self-awareness and some ability to um, be reflective and to be introspective um, and to be accurate about um, the, their self-perceptions uh, so that they can use those tools in working with clients, um, any kind of client systems. Also, uh, section that's within this structured um, part of the journal is uh, classroom connections. So they're looking at um, HBSE or human behavior and the social environment courses. They're looking at policy and research courses and they're looking at their practice courses. It's important that you talk to the students about the curriculum and about the classes that they took so you can be familiar with that and talk to the students about what learning from the classroom did they use in the cases that they're working on or in the projects that they're working on or with the constituencies that they're working with. So they're going to look at each of those courses. They're going to identify specific topics and information that they learned. They're going to talk about that learning so that they can demonstrate their learning to us. And then they're going to talk about how they used that learning in the key experience. So how they applied the learning from the classroom in their key experience. Um, they're also going to look in the structured section at some values, some diversity, and some social and economic justice that occurred within the key experience. Then they get to their time and activities report. And in their time and activities report, they're going to go through their hours and uh, give us some totals so that we can all be on the same page for their progress towards reaching their hours at midterm and at final. Um, please note that we tell the students that lunch hours don't count towards their hours. Um, and so we'd appreciate the support in that and that students um, shouldn't be pushing and pushing and pushing to just shove in as many hours as possible. They should be practicing positive self-care and getting out of the office or taking breaks during that lunch period as much as possible. And then they give us a kind of a summary of the activities that they've been doing and how those relate to the learning goals and practice behaviors. It's very important for us to see those activities, especially with second year students. We only see them once during the semester. And so we understand and keep in touch with them and, and know what's going on in, the, in their practicum through looking at those activities and making sure that those activities are meeting learning goals, that they're experiencing higher level of needs um, for the clinical and the PPNA practicums, and that they are progressing towards their learning goals. So we really, those activities are very important to us to see. And for the newer version, um, which is the second and the fourth journal submissions that the students will be doing, they're going to take a connection of some assignment that they've done in a social work course and a field experience. And they're going to talk to us about what from this assignment changed how you reacted in the field experience and how it contributed to what happened in your field experience. There's an abbreviated time in attendance um, where it talks about, uh, it does go through your time, of course, but then for the uh, activities table, um, you don't talk about how it relates to the learning goals. They're just listing of activities and the learning goals it met with no description. It's just listing, really. And then the uh, summary for us of what's been occurring in supervision, which we're really excited about because we haven't had that recorded in the past. So we're excited about that component. Of course, I discussed before that the students should make sure to give plenty of um, lead time so that you have time to fill, um, to make comments. Um, we look very first to see your comments before we grade. We want to see that uh, the student has first given it to you and has received some feedback and then we will grade it after that. Um, so that's why it's important to get that lead time so that the student can still get it submitted to us um, after you have comments and still have it submitted by the due date. 
Um, there are circumstances, of course, we know you guys are very busy um, and that there's going to be some times that you just aren't able to get to it because there's emergencies or whatever. Um, and of course, we're flexible with that. If you could just drop us an email and let the faculty liaison know that, oops, you know, I've had some things going on, so I'm going to be late with the journal. The student had it on time. And we can also see when the student requested comments from you. Now, if the student requests comments from you a day before it's due, then I'm going to tell the student that it is late and that that student needs to be submitting it to you prior to that. So talk to the student about how long of lead time you need to um, realistically get that in on time. Journals in task stream are completed by the field instructor under the reviewer tab. So this is the same as completing the learning plan. You are in the reviewer tab. Uh, the student knows his or her due dates. And so uh, you should try to get an idea of what those are just in case you're on vacation, etc. And you need the student to get information to you early or you need to change a due date. So uh, make sure when you're discussing expectations that you're going over those journal due dates. Um, the student completes the journal, requests comments from you, but doesn't make any changes uh, when they get your comments. Then once the student gets your comments, uh, he or she is going to submit for grading to the faculty liaison. So they just need to click submit and it will go straight to the faculty liaison as that's the way the process is set up. So request comments for you and then the student will submit um, for the faculty meetings. Okay, let's discuss midterm and final evaluations. Uh, your faculty liaison is going to make a site visit for both for midterms and that's for all students for first years and second years or 7971 and 8971. Uh, we do not come for a final visit, as I stated before. Um, so the student is responsible for completing all of the documentation by the date you see there on your uh, slide. Um, the midterm should be finished prior to the site visit at midterm. Uh, the student will initiate the evaluation process and complete his or her own Likert scale self-evaluation form. And then uh, once that's done, then the, the field instructor will have an evaluate button pop up um, on that uh, grid. So the grid that the field instructor will see at this time is on the evaluation tab. So if you'll recall, prior to this, we have always been in the the reviewer tab. In the reviewer tab, you've looked at journals and you've looked at the learning plan and you write out comments in reply. This is the evaluation tab because you're actually needing to evaluate the student's performance. And so you, on that front page, when you log in, you'll need to always click the evaluation tab if you're doing anything with the midterm or the final and you won't be able to see their evaluation unless you're on that evaluation tab. So once you click onto the evaluation tab and the student has filled out his or her self-evaluation, you'll see a green tab that says evaluate now. I'm not sure it's green, it changes colors every time they up to update the web, so um, the software. So uh, don't quote me on the green. But there's an evaluate tab, you'll click that and then you'll have your blank form pop up on one side and you'll have the students completed self-evaluation pop up on the other side. To have this happen, you need to make sure you do not have your pop-up blockers on um, in order for you to see both at the same time. Um, and again, you have to be on that evaluation tab. Uh, here, this process is the same. Um, for the final evaluations and you can see those due dates here. Um, when you're completing evaluations, remember it's not a reflection of your relationship with the student and if that's going good or bad, it's about the student's performance in field across all of the situations that have been occurring in field 
all of the opportunities and activities. Um, typically, we ask our field instructors to leave room for growth, so not everyone should be scoring the highest possible score um, at midterm. Um, because even we are not performing at the highest possible level all the time in every single function. And so uh, please be critical about that, but also share your philosophy about evaluations with your student. Um, some students tend to get higher scores because that's the philosophy of the field instructor. And then when other students get low scores, they begin to think that they have performed poorly in some way. Um, there, we do not grade based on what you score them. As long as they're reaching competencies and moving forward as expected, then they're good to go. Um, but please share that philosophy with the students so that they have an accurate picture uh, of their performance. Um, and then also, as we've talked about previously, evaluations should not be a surprise. You should be talking about evaluations during each and every weekly supervision so that you can talk to the student about performance, um, looking at the learning plan to see where the student needs more experience um, in order to perform better, and um, where the student is already doing well and um, can begin to have less time spent in those areas. Um, so again, evaluations should never be a surprise um, as you're reviewing them routinely. I want to further discuss the information that we've talked about about evaluation. Um, and again, deficient performance is a pattern. And so the student is made aware of performance issues immediately um, when they occur, uh, or at least weekly, you should be reviewing those performance issues. I recommend that you document this if there are any concerns that you document those via email to the liaison and or keep a record that you share with the student and have the student sign. Um, so essentially, if there are performance issues, you're developing a little bit of a contract or that action plan 
to figure out how to um, to uh, rectify those issues or to improve upon the concerned area. And so um, we need to have some kind of paper trail. We need to have some kind of um, documentation so that the student, we know that the student is aware of what's going on. And when you get to the formal midterm, you can present that information and say, we've talked about this multiple times um, because uh, I have this documented here and here's what we went over, so you already know about these things. Um, if there is a deficient performance at midterm or at final, it needs to be documented in task stream on the midterm comment form or the final comment form, um, along with the action plan that has been discussed and agreed to. Um, if the student earns a U at midterm, the comments should reflect that and discuss specific bullet points that outline the requirements that the student must meet to progress to an S. And so if the student earns a U, if the student is performing poorly and has done so throughout the semester, that needs to be reflected on the midterm with a U. And along with that U in the comments, um, goes along the action plan uh, or the bullet points of what the student is going to do to earn an S by the end of the semester. Then we talked about that a little bit before. So an example would be the student, um, the student, let me think of a good one. The student is um, having trouble completing an assessment um, independently. And so this would be more for a first year student. And so you would um, make the action plan that the student needs to be able to complete uh, independent um, or supervise, actually. The student needs to be able to complete supervised assessments with 95% um, accuracy um, before being able to do independent. And, uh, and the action plan, the bullet points then, would be that the student is going to observe, you know, however many, eight, assessments, um, full assessments completed by field instructor or co-workers. Um, student will perform uh, five um, supervised assessments prior to beginning independent assessments. And so you can make those kind of bullet points of what the student will need to do um, to be able to go back and try to work at this goal again and what that will look like when it's been, when that goal is now successful, when that objective is now successful. Um, so be sure um, that you are documenting this either in your own personal form of documentation, via email, and for sure formally at midterm and final if there are um, significant concerns. That way everyone's aware of issues prior to the formal midterm and final and nothing should be as um, surprising. The student always has the option at midterm and at final and in other ways to be able to provide their comments um, about the grades and the evaluation process. And so they are going to do that um, on the midterm signature page and on the final signature page where they're able to put their comments in their response to the evaluations. So that was just a little review of kind of how you create that paper trail to make sure that we have good documentation throughout um, if the student is having issues or concerns. Again, that happens with a very limited number of students, but I just want to make sure everyone is aware of all of those um, same things uh, so that you can all document in, in the same way and have those same expectations. Of course, your liaison is always available to you to discuss any of these issues and to help you through this process. So you can always just give them an email, let them know what's going on, and ask you how to proceed. I really appreciate everyone going through this um, online orientation. I think it's hugely important for the quality of our field instruction for everyone to um, watch the orientation, which is now, which is why the field committee has required that. Most schools have a requirement that, student, that field instructors go through this orientation. Ours is shorter than most, um, but it does give you the specifics and again kind of orients you to the fact that you're now in the teacher role and not necessarily in um, 
the practitioner role or the uh, administrative role that you're currently in at your place of business. And so orienting you to that and expectations of the practicum and student expectations to kind of um, let you know um, where to go and how to be in that student, in that teacher role. And so if you have any questions about any of that, let us know. But again, I appreciate you going through this. Um, my email again is C-A-R-Y-S is in Sam at M-I-S-S-O-U-R-I dot E-D-U. Um, and so you can always contact me if you have any needs or anything. But the typical first line of contact for you is, you, is the faculty liaison to your student. Um, and the student has that information and will share that with you on the computer she begins. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great spring and have a great semester with your student. Thank you. I would just like to chat a little bit about the COVID virus and how that has impacted field as it has impacted everything else. Um, in spring 2020 is when, uh, as we all know, the pandemic began and we began to see an impact in field. Uh, so the school and the liaisons worked very, very closely with all of our students and agencies. Um, and we were very flexible in finding ways to allow students to continue to move forward in field and complete their field hours. And we plan to continue this strong collaboration and flexibility in helping our students continue to move forward in their um, educational plan. So uh, we had students completing remote work um, and to help facilitate this we've created a lot of different resources. Um, those resources were provided for you on the email that was sent with all of the orientation information. Um, you may use anything on this if your students are working remotely. Um, it's uh, again up to the agency and the student whether or not the student is working remotely. The school is not going to set down requirements that the student begins to work remotely. It's varied very much between different agencies and your different policies and what agency, what um, overarching uh, body is in charge of the agency and how you're making those decisions. Um, so we leave those decisions up to you and we will help support the student within that decision. Uh, if students are working remotely, we need to just know about that and, and give the final approval for that um, just so we can monitor where our students are located and what needs you and the students might be having um, based on the new working or learning environment. Um, if students are going to work remotely for the whole practicum um, or the majority of their practicum, we need to ensure that there is a way to do all levels of work, micro, meso, and macro, and that there's opportunity for students to meet with clients and opportunities for students to accomplish all nine competencies included in the learning plan. Uh, we just... Um, need to make sure that students can still reach competency, especially in this foundational practicum. We're going to build upon these competencies, so we need to ensure that they have been able to reach those in all of the required areas. Uh, we know that this is a very difficult time, that things change very, very quickly, um, and we are trying to respond to those changes. Um, so if anyone has any needs, um, your faculty liaison is your first point of contact. We're happy to problem solve with you. Um, our director has been uh, doing a lot of work with agencies and helping them to adjust to telehealth issues, um, ethics around telehealth. Uh, and lots of other different organizational needs. So please get in touch with us. Um, you're not out there alone with the student just trying to find your way. Uh, we want to support you in every way possible. Um, so just reach out to your liaison and, and let us um, help you in any way that we can.
In conclusion, please let me know if you have any questions. You can see my phone number and my email there. Um, I'm happy to try to answer those as best I can um, before practicum begins or throughout practicum. You will also have a faculty liaison for each of the students that can be your first point of contact should you have any questions that arise in the middle of practicum. I really just want to thank everybody so much for um, sticking with me throughout this orientation and completing that. Um, hopefully you won't have to do it now for a little bit of time since you've just taken it um, for a couple years. And uh, just really thank you for your time and expertise and willingness to share your wisdom with our students and uh, facilitate their growth. Uh, please don't forget to complete the quiz uh, to demonstrate your knowledge and let us know that you have completed um, your orientation and you're ready to move forward as a field instructor. Thank you so much. Good luck this semester and let me know if you need anything.